Hey, how's it going? I uh, hope you're having a great day. So the, the buy and sell stock problem, this is a, an algorithm problem that shows up in, in a lot of different platforms and books. It's used, I believe, in interviews quite often. It's pretty simple. So you're given an array of prices and each of those prices represents the price for a given day. So for example, maybe we were talking about the GameStop stock and at first maybe it was five dollars and then it goes up to a hundred and then it goes up to three hundred and then the next day it goes back down to twenty dollars right so each of these numbers represents the current price of a given stock for a given day okay um, and what we want to do with that is we want to maximize our profit by choosing one day to buy and then choosing a different day in the future to sell right so for example and if we were taking this example array and we were trying to maximize the profit ideally you probably want to buy at the earliest in this case and then sell it at the peak at the 300 so that you would have a max profit of 300 minus 5 which equals 295 right now there's also another case where what if you can't achieve any profit at all like for example what if the price was just going down right um like maybe you bought at the peak and then it just goes down from there uh, in that case we need to return a zero so that's the buy and sell stock problem we're going to talk about uh, what are the different approaches you can take i think at first i will show you the brute force solution to this and then we're going to optimize that to see if we can do something better to show you the setup that I'm using here, I just have an index.ts file that has a shell of the function that we're gonna develop. And then I have a test file, which uses Jest to provide various different inputs. You know, So I have test case A, B, and C in here. Um, there's one for that scenario where you're supposed to return zero if you can't make a profit. And you can see, uh, basically we pass in an array of numbers and we expect it to equal a certain amount. So these are the correct answers. And in my, in my previous videos, I've been covering TDD, test driven development. Uh, so we're gonna take kind of that same approach where we have the tests. If I run NPM test, you know, you should see that all of our test cases are gonna fail because we haven't written a solution yet. So generally with most array problems where it's looking for some kind of value throughout that array, you should always know that there's always a brute force solution to that where maybe you just iterate as many times as you need to until you find your answer, right? So for example, in our case, we know that if we simply just try all the different pairs, all the different possible pairs of buying and selling, then we're bound to find the, the max profit that way. So as an example, if we were to say that, all right, let's first try buying on the first day and then figure out what's the max profit of selling it for the rest of that week, right? So you, you'd probably loop through this and do something like three minus five, seven minus five, nine minus five, one minus five, until throughout that loop, you'll find out that the the max that I can get in this instance is nine minus five. So in that iteration, our max so far is four, all right, nine minus five. From there, we can then move to the next number and then we can try all of the different combinations that you can do with three. So you can do seven minus three, nine minus three, one minus three. In this case, we'll find out that the max profit we can get is gonna be if you sold at this day. So nine minus three equals six. So comparing that to the previous uh, max that we found so far, which is a four, six is greater than four. So we're gonna say that, all right, this is the max profit that we ran into so far. So you can generally try this approach where you just keep trying all possible combinations and then track what the max is so far and then at the end of all those combinations that you've tried your your max so far will have the answer right so if i just kept doing this we'll find out that this actually is the result you'll get a max profit of six so that's what we're looking for 
All right, so let's first try typing out the solution for the brute force. So to get started, we know from our diagram earlier that we're gonna be tracking a max value. So we can just initialize that to be zero. We ultimately wanna do some logic to update that. And then at the end of that logic, we return the max value that we've found so far. All right, so we, we start with that. So first we'll build a for loop. We've got a for loop starting from the beginning of the prices all the way to uh, the length minus one because we don't need it to go all the way to the end. And then within that, we're gonna nest another for loop. Now this for loop starts at the value right after i and then goes all the way to the end, right? If we go back to our diagram, right? So like, so from our previous example, you start at the green. So if you imagine this is our i, we're then gonna iterate through j starting from the number after that all the way to the end of the array. So we talked about just calculating the profit as we go, right? So profit equals um, the price that you sell at, which is the J position minus the price that you bought at, which is the I position, okay? And then from there, we just kind of say, if this profit is greater than the the profit that we, the max that we've seen so far, I want to keep track of that. So we can do if profit is greater than our max so far, I want to make max equal the profit. And you'll see with that, all of a sudden, all of our test cases pass. So we do have a valid answer here, but it's not the best answer. Again, knowing the how to get to the brute force is good, but it's generally not the answer that you would want to use in an interview. Uh, why is that? Because you can see that because we're doing uh, nested for loops here, this has a time complexity of n squared, meaning that as your as the number of prices goes up, you know, the larger your array, the slower this is going to become because again, it's trying all possible combinations. Um, so you want to think about what's a better approach to not do as much work, but still get to the same answer. All right, so let's go back to the drawing board here to see if there's a different approach that we can take that, that will be a little bit more optimized. So with a small input like this where we only have five items it's pretty easy to see right that you you can just look forward and see that oh the highest value here is nine and the lowest value before that is three that's got to be the answer right i buy at three and sell at nine you can it might help a little bit if you put the values in a graph so let's do that real quick so if we were to graph the values on a chart so for example, on our first day, it starts at five. I'm just going to kind of guesstimate the position here. And you know, that goes all the way down to, to three. And then from three, it goes up to seven. And then from seven, it goes up to nine. And then on the last day, it goes even lower all the way to one. Again, this is kind of just an approximation of what this might look like if you graphed it. Okay, so let's briefly talk about how does this graph help us arrive to the more optimized answer. Well, looking at this simple graph, you can kind of visually see is that what we're ultimately trying to optimize for is the ability to pick the highest point that we can sell at following the lowest point that we can buy at. Right? So if, for example, if I were to represent the profit using a blue line here. If I bought at this day and sold at this day, the profit roughly looks like this, right? That's the, the difference in the heights. And if I sold at this day, we'll notice that we're getting a much longer blue line. So we know that that's a better profit. Let me add a little bit more to this chart so that maybe it can help you better visualize this. So imagine that th this chart kept going, right? Uh, maybe it goes like this. 
So in, in our iteration so far, we've kind of said that, okay, this blue line right here represents the max profit that we've found so far. But as we're going forward, we'll notice that, oh, there's a lower point here. There's a lower valley. Can we then try to see if there's a bigger potential profit going forward if we were to buy at that point instead? So I'm going to mark this with a red circle to kind of say this is our new minimum price that we've found. And then going forward from that point, we're going to calculate all of the potential profits. So again, if I were to represent that with blue lines, and each time it's calculating these blue lines, the potential profit, if we were to sell at that point, assuming that we bought at this red point, we kind of compare, is, the, is, that profit, is that potential profit something larger than what we found before over here on the left side, right? So visually, you can see these blue lines are not anywhere near bigger than this one. However, this massive blue line is larger than this one. So we can say that this is the largest profit so far, right? And you kind of just keep going through that exercise of you, you kind of follow the chart. If you find a lower value, like the two points that we have in this first green dot and the red dot over here, and then calculate the potential profits going forward from that point, then all you have to do is track what's the max profit that we've seen so far. So if the chart did look like this, we'll find out that the, the maximum profit is whatever the value is represented by this blue line if we subtracted this highest peak from this lowest valley. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're gonna do that in code. All right, so back to our solution here, I deleted our previous brute force one. What we talked about in the previous diagram is that in addition to tracking the max profit that we've seen so far, we're also going to start tracking the the minimum value that we've run into so far. So the, the minimum value in that graph. So we can initialize this to uh, just some absurd, absurdly large number. Maybe you can use number that max value here. And then we're again going to iterate through our array. But in this case, we don't really care about having more than one pointer anymore. So we can just use a basic for off loop instead of the, the one with the indexes. So we can do const price of prices. So first step, we said that we're going to try and, and track the min value so far. So we're going to compare the price with the min that we have at the moment. And if it's less than that, we want to save it, right? So our min becomes price. And then we also said that if the next price is higher, right? So it, it would be a case that goes beyond this. If, if price is higher than a min, then we should calculate the profit. So if we did price minus min, and that's greater than the max profit we've seen so far, which initially is just zero, we're then going to save that value as the max profit so far. Okay. And again, notice that our test cases are now passing. So we're back to a valid solution. So that's pretty much our solution. Uh, one minor improvement you can maybe do is if you just want to clean it up, you can utilize the, the math min and max methods. So you can replace this with um, min equals math.min of the current min and the price. And then you can do max equals math that max of the max that we have so far and the next calculated potential profit. Okay, so that's pretty much equivalent. Anytime you're doing um, min and max tracking, uh, you can usually utilize these to clean things up a little bit, right? So you just save yourself just a few lines there, but it overall just looks a lot nicer. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, I think this is a pretty good kind of basic algorithm practice, and then especially, you know, working with arrays, if that's new to you. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any feedback about this, or maybe you have a better solution. I'd love to hear about it. 
Anyways, hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.